Hello and welcome to another Logic Pro 10 training here in this beautiful group. For the people who don't know who I am, I'm Ben. Um, I'm a, well, composer, I'd say. Um, I'm an Apple certified technician and I am an Apple certified pro in Logic Pro 10. Last week, um, I created a poll asking you guys actually what uh, you would uh, want me to cover uh, during this week's live session. And well, I wouldn't say the majority, but kind of a quite fair um, amount of people wanted to see how to use Logic Pro 10 um, in combination with video. Um, and basically that's what, uh, what I'm going to do today with you. Um, first things first, I need to do my typical check just to see if the sound is actually right and actually working. So I, my meters show that there is sound coming out, which is really amazing. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, now, um, I will just show you a quick uh, video I did a while ago. Um, some of you might recognize it. Um, it is basically a trailer for Spitfire Audio Albion 1. Um, I don't remember when exactly that was. It's maybe even a year ago, not 100% sure. Um, they created a competition where um, composers were asked to score one of their trailers. So they provided the video file um, and well, we should start composing on that video file. Uh, what I will do now, um, I will quickly play you the trailer um, with uh, everything going on. And then well, we just dive into and check um, what I did, um, maybe the one or the other trick I've done and show you how I achieved certain things um, during this uh, trailer composition. So let me just uh, open the, the video file here. Okay, so you should see something very nicely. Um, I will make it a bit bigger, but still have a kind of Logic Pro running in the background. So you should still be able to see what's happening um, in general. So let me just yeah, hit play and show you what I did. And there you have it. Okay, so um, first things first, I uh, was thinking about when kind of these, um, this well competition came about, um, what to do. So what what is the target here? So I watched the clip and was thinking, okay, um, at the end of the day, this is advertising for this particular sample library, for this product. So what sounds should I use? In my opinion, I should use sounds of this product. So I had the Albion 1 library already anyways, and I started uh, kind of combining a, a, a list of sounds which I wanted to use. Um, and that was kind of my main focus. So uh, using the actual product of, uh, uh, of Spitfire Audio to compose the trailer. Um, I was kind of watching the video a couple of times. I was thinking, okay, so in the beginning, um, I don't know, it didn't really give me a, let's say, melody or rhythm vibe. So that's why I decided to go for all these beautiful effects, which I will show you later. Um, then kind of as soon as the uh, logo came about, um, which is approximately here. Yep. I decided to uh, kind of go into a more rhythmic section to show um, what short sounds and the drum sounds and a bit of synthesizer sounds like. 
And then um, we are coming to the uh, actual very interesting part, um, which is the uh, filming of the orchestra. Um, so first we kind of start with this mixer thing, then um, it goes into, um, well, string section, the French horns, the woodwinds, um, then we have a guy uh, playing the timpani, then we have a bit of a trumpet sound, then another short uh, string, string section part, sorry, also my tongue is not awake this uh, today. And then we kind of go into the studio with, um, I think it's Homai, I'm not 100% sure, but I guess it is her. Um, and she is kind of creating a project. She is using um, most likely the library and we have a, a bit of, well, let's say keyboard and production movement. So we see here um, the contact instance of Albion one of the string section, um, same thing from a different shot. And um, then we have the moment when she is hitting the key um, after that, uh, we go in a few more um, wordings until information black out and the video is finishing. Um, so the first thing I did, and this is what I would recommend to um, everybody who is kind of trying to score um, to um, already pre-cut video, um, is to actually, uh, let me open this up here, the global tracks. Um, and you can see here markers. So I have um, the normal markers, but you see they have a little lock here. I will explain why. And then we have um, arrangement markers over here. Um, we have a tempo track and we have the time signature and the, uh, uh, the key signature, which actually I didn't change. And it's definitely not written in C, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, let me just show you kind of the first thing you should do when you import uh, a video. Um, Obviously, you need to know where to put the markers. The problem is when you put a marker in Logic, as soon as you change the tempo, the markers, let's say, go back and forth. So let me maybe demonstrate that here. Uh, let's just move this. Um, if I would say I change uh, that tempo, which is at 95 here, and I bring that down to, let's say, 62, everything changes everything is messed up. So whatever you did, as soon as you do a tempo change in there, you are losing your markers, which you set before, if you only kind of do the, uh, let's say, audio markers. Um, that's why we need markers, which are only for the video and which make sure that when you set them, they will not move. So no matter what you do with your tempo track, um, if you make it fast, if you make it slower, these markers will always stay because they are, uh, let's say, um, baked in the video file. Let me just undo this quickly. So um, to achieve this, to kind of create these markers, the locked ones here, what you will have to do, you have to go uh, in the upper right corner here to navigate. Then you have kind of the create marker um, area. Um, so you could create a normal marker or, and here comes the fun part, um, you click on other and then you go to um, create movie scene markers. And there you have different options, um, kind of what you, uh, what markers you would like to set and how you want to set them. Um, what I usually do, I simply click on entire movie. What that does, um, it's checking the video file for cuts, um, pretty harsh cuts. It doesn't always recognize properly the, the, let's say, soft transitions, but at least you have an idea of what's happening and you can adjust the details later in the fine print. So if you click here on entire movie, um, Logic will create these markers, which you can see up here. And the only thing you have to do then is kind of um, remove the markers, which you don't want. So because sometimes there is no need, um, especially here in the back uh, where I have, uh, where it's written words, I think there were four different markers, which I didn't need. So I just deleted them and left them as one um, big thing. Um, and then you can take everything from there. So these markers will not be changed. They stay as they are, which is really amazing. Um, what I did uh, then, if I remember correctly, because as I said, this is a year ago, um, I started kind of uh, going to the, uh, let's say to the marker positions and started adjusting the tempo. So kind of just the feeling I had. So usually I do that with uh, tapping the tempo. So I have a shortcut in Logic, which I just put T because I never use a letter for anything else anyways. And I start just tapping to uh, what I see and what I feel. 
Um, I check kind of the approximation if kind of the tempo is all right, if everything is working fine. Here I ended up at uh, tempo 90. Um, it didn't really matter in this case because as I said, I didn't want to uh, use anything, um, let's say rhythmic or melodic or uh, stuff like this. I just wanted to have some nice little um, effects. Um, yeah, so basically this is how I uh, did that and I well, repeated the process kind of throughout the rest of the um, uh, of the track. Um, so maybe let's uh, let's dive quickly into the um, effects I, I used here. Um, I will just, for overview purposes, kind of close this because ah, yeah, that's much better. So less less mess in this case. Um, and let's just play through the um, effects again. So I have a few strings effects, a few um, synthesizer effects. Now there are some brass effects coming in. Yeah. Before the image goes black. And the actual rhythm uh, starts. So, um, in this case, it was actually pretty easy to kind of um, just throw these effects in. Um, just had to decide, uh, especially kind of when it comes to the uh, to the glissandi effects, uh, when do I want them to stop? So, if I would just play this one here. So I uh, wanted uh, this to end literally um, when when the video goes to black. So maybe let me uh, open this again, make it a tiny bit smaller that you guys can see. So um, I needed this effect to stop when the image goes uh, dark. So which means I had to kind of move it a bit uh, back and forth. Um, what some people do, and if you don't, let's say, uh, want to just have MIDI data here, it's a good idea to have these effects uh, bounced um, uh, bounced in place. Um, so just as an audio file so that you can actually see when the file is uh, finishing. Everything else is just trial and error, just kind of move it a bit around um, until it ends exactly where you want it to end. So let me just play this uh, little effect again. Yep, and that's all you need to do here. So let me uh, close the editor again. Um, yeah, so basically uh, this is um, a bit of uh, trickery when it comes to scoring something where you think, okay, there isn't really any rhythm to a scene. Um, when, you, when, you watch, uh, when you watch a movie um, or uh, any kind of video, um, as a composer, you kind of have a feeling what tempo that gives you. It depends on the kind of cuts. It depends on, let's say, uh, in this case, for example, the words coming in, the movement of that uh, of these uh, little thingies here in the background. This gave me kind of um, this movement or kind of the tempo feel of the whole uh, thing. So it, it fit really well. If I just kind of play it again. So it's kind of slow but not too slow, so it's not kind of like a, a 60 BPM slow. It has a certain feel to it, but it's it starts slow. And um, that's why I didn't, whoops, sorry. That's why I didn't want to have any melody or um, anything in particular here. So um, the next uh, little thing is actually um, for me the kind of jumping into um, blackout and going to the logo before the rhythm section starts. Um, so I might have some things actually on. One second. What's very important for whatever you do, have your cup of coffee or the beverage of your choice makes life so much easier. So let me hit just kind of that small little transition. So um, since the logo is coming up slowly, so it's not kind of, if, if you go to the blackout, the blackout is with a boom, it's immediately dark. And then the logo comes up 
slowly. So it's not like um, it goes with the big bang and then you start. So you need, at least that's what I thought, um, that the piece needs a tiny bit of a build up. It doesn't need a lot. So you don't have to put an extraordinary, uh, I don't know, woodwind orchestration on it. I mean, you can, nobody is stopping you by, from that. But I just thought a tiny bit of, um, let's say, uh, crescendo of any kind. Um, and in this case, I think I decided to use uh, the beautiful, nasty uh, longs of the brass section as the main um, sound coming through here. So let me just show you that. So it starts slow and it ends up just as loud um, as it needs to be for the rest of the uh, instruments to, to come through. Um, let me, uh, don't you have anything in the synthesizer part here? No. Um, so let me just uh, play this tiny part again and then we see what comes next. <laughs> Yes. Um, so maybe we talk about uh, the next part, which is actually the logo part itself. Um, let me just make it a tiny bit smaller so that I can actually see what I'm doing here. And let me open up my uh, my instruments again. I know there's a shortcut, but you know what? I don't care. So um, now let's talk about kind of the rhythm of this next um, section. Um, it's actually the same thing like um, in the intro. So I have a bit of a feeling of the uh, of the rhythm and of the speed, but it's not it's not very prominent in this case because <clears throat> excuse me um, because you don't have a lot um, happening here actually. So you have the I becoming brighter, then you have the Albion one coming in, and you have the tenth anniversary um, edition coming in, and a bit of turning of the wheel in the background and uh, kind of the wordings getting a tiny bit bigger. And that's it. There is nothing else. Um, so I thought, okay, um, I have to make sure that um, at, let's say, key points, which I can define because they aren't cut hard, I can define the point when I want things to happen. And I don't know, when I compose music, for some reason, I like tempo between, let's say, 85 and a hundred more or less that's kind of my uh, feel good uh, tempo for whatever I compose um, so I stuck with it and I was just checking okay how does it actually work will um, on that say key points of the beat will the words come up so let me just play that for you again <laughs> So, and it actually does, you can see, you can hear I have a, a bit of a reverb and, and a bit of a delay kind of going on um, the instruments here, um, which I, I really like doing these kind of things. So um, basically when the uh, Albion 1 logo is uh, coming in and when it's kind of in, in its uh, fullness, so which means not faded anymore, just coming out like this, um, I have some... Uh, da, 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 do I have something coming in? I think I have a beat coming in here and I have high brass come a bit later. Um, and when the 10th anniversary um, edition coming is coming in, this is when the high brass really sharply kind of go in. So let me just play it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, bang. So, to give this, let's say, rather slow video part a bit of movement. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I did in this uh, area. Um, basically, let me maybe just play the percussions soloed to see uh, what actually happened here. And I think I have a few anvils going on. Yes. 
So um, I have some uh, accentuations at the points, uh, kind of when the video or kind of when the text is coming in. So in this case, um, I make sure that uh, when Albion 1, when the wording is nice and visible, I have a boom. And when the um, 10th anniversary uh, edition uh, uh, overlay is coming up, that I have just another thing, which by the way, is then obviously complementing the, the high brass. So let's just kind of see uh, uh, that one beat again. Here comes the boom. And so um, for uh, synthesizer purposes, um, I love using the, the synths in, in Albion 1. There are so many nice sounds actually. Um, and maybe we just listen to the synths in this area to see what I actually did there. And that was it. There is nothing more to it. It's just, I think, two or three pads bit of a gated uh, thing and um, what I did here is I think I automated the gate with the uh, yes with the mod wheel um, let's just go in here no wait that was the wrong one I have to have to go where I have to go because otherwise that won't work um, where am I here looks like I selected the wrong region this is what happens when you do stuff live. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. That's the one. So let me switch this to modulation. Um, so this is the patch which actually has the the, the modulation um, of the gated synthesizer in. So I just made it up and down, kind of in a smooth wave, um, in order to uh, just achieve a nice relaxed and smooth result underneath all the chaos which is happening on top. So um, this is just. It's just there. It's not in your face. It's subtle, um, but it gives, a, it gives gives a nice effect at the end of the day. And there we go with that. So, um, well, after this uh, nice little intro here, so let me maybe move this to the other side because now, um, as I said, now the fun actually starts. So um, let me play you the next section here um, again. So this is kind of um, where the video actually starts becoming really interesting and where we have to be careful about what kind of music we show when the image is coming in. Um, or kind of, uh, we, we really have to write um, towards what we see because there's nothing worse um, than listening to a piece of music which is not really correlating with what you actually see on screen because what, what's the point at the end of the day? The music is there to either accommodate um, what you see on screen or in this case really lead you to uh, what you see on screen. So as I said before, here we have, I think, yeah, well, it's the usual guy. I think it's Jake Jackson sitting behind his desk in uh, Air Lindhurst Hall. Then um, we have uh, the string section, we have the horns and so on and so forth. Let me just play this um, section uh, for you again. And um, then I will go into what I did with regards to what I saw in the picture. So um, maybe we do that bit by bit. Um, first things first. Um, let me let me maybe just mute the sound for a second. Let's see if that worked. Technically, it should. And it did not. So let's do this again. Okay. So um, let me play that part of the video. So here, um, when the mixer is being shown, um, you can see one thing in this area here. You can see full meters. So which means whatever is happening in the studio at the moment 
either it's just playback or it's a recording, even though I don't see a lot of people in there. So most likely it's uh, playback, which is happening here. As soon as the video is starting, the faders go down, which means there was sound and then there is not anymore, or let's say not that much. We don't have to go into the um, extreme detail here and really make sure that there is silence as soon as we see this. It's not necessary, but I think, and that is why I chose what I did, it's nice to kind of make sure that kind of from the noise which we had before, we actually bring the volume down. So let me just uh, show you the video for a second. So you can see the fader slowly disappear. So then we have the string section, which means we want to hear string. Here we want to hear horns, here woodwinds, here timpani, here when we trumpet and more strings. And then we kind of um, go into whatever comes after. Um, so um, I maybe sh I should just, I mean, uh, if, if I unmute this and we just hear again where we are coming from and where we are going to. So um, notice when I hit the play button, we have the boom kind of which is the leftover from the passage before and then the sound goes lower. It doesn't go away, it just goes lower. So, um, and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. The meters on the mixer go down, which means less sound. And that's exactly what I did. Less sound. One more time. Less sound. And we continue our story. So um, the next part in this area here, um, this is kind of when the string section comes in. Um, I wanted to put a bit focus on kind of long strings because this is what I see. I don't see kind of um, the the violinists and um, do we have viola players here as well? Most likely, I don't want to see them doing this. So there is no point in actually showing that. Um, so I wanted to have a long, nice string sound. Um, let me play this for you. I go here. So um, just a string bed, nothing else. Um, and a bit of synthesizer, but synthesizer doesn't count in this case. Then the next picture, we have the French horns. So the French horns played already before. So it's not that I just started them for and just kind of have them playing one note for a second and that's it. Um, I wanted to make sure that the French horns um, are being heard nicely. French horns in Albion 1 um, are usually kind of within the brass uh, mid so which is here so let me maybe just open that one up in the editor make it a bit smaller yes so um what i did here um as you may see um is i'm i kind of uh, programmed the mod wheel that when the shot of the uh french horns come in is basically at as loudest point in this quiet area so I wanted to build up the French horns with regards to um, the dynamics in order to make them loud when they are shown and then take them a bit back again because then they will be replaced by something else. So let me just play this area again. Okay, I couldn't hear anything, so I have no idea why. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I don't know. So the MIDI, MIDI chase is actually switched on, I think. So it should be. I mean, if I go in here. Okay. I think now you could hear that um, kind of build up. So let me just do that one more time. French horns coming in, getting louder. Okay. Um, now let me go to actually the next shot. So in the next shot, um, you can see a, a woodwind player playing the flute and uh, uh, what's this looks like a contrabassoon, whatever in the background. Um, and I basically did the same thing with the, with the woodwinds, same strategy. So at this highest point of the woodwinds or kind of when the woodwind is shown, I want to have the woodwinds audible, so not just kind of playing in the background and you don't really hear them. I want to make sure that they are really heard. So that's why I kind of um, uh, increased the volume level here a bit. 
So let me just uh, show you that. And it's not that I want to um, remove the woodwinds uh, from, from the picture just because the image shows, so it's still there. But here in this area, the woodwind player naturally would take a break to breathe anyways. So might as well kind of keep the volume till there and take it down, especially since the next shot, as you can see here, is um, uh, the timpani guy. Um, so I have to figure out, um, yeah, exactly. So um, I used, um, well, the Darwin percussion, um, and I think it's a timpani roll style. What do we have here? Uh, da -da -da -dum. I have to go one deeper. Exactly. So um, what I basically did, I uh, in this case, I just played it how I would play it if I would have had um, beaters for the timpani, which I don't, but I have two fingers and I have a keyboard. So I create um, created the role myself. This is all, by the way, um, as you might see, this is all um, uh, quantized, um, but in a way that you might not hear it necessarily how, uh, how much uh, quantization there actually is. So if I go to the um, note velocity here, you can see um, a build up here. It's basically the same thing like what I do with a modulation curve um, when I draw the modulation in, but in this case, I just drew um, basically my, uh, um, my velocity values in for this uh, part. The timpanis are actually playing um, way before. So they start here in this area already, but very low. They become um, uh, increasingly louder and the closer it gets to this part, where actually the gentleman is playing the timpani the, the hardest, I took them to, what is it, about 100, maybe? What do we have here? Maybe a bit less. Yeah, well, 98. Um, yeah, a bit louder, just to make sure that when the timpani is shown, that the timpani is actually heard. So let me just go back that tiny bit, coming from the flutes. <laughs> So then after that part is gone, I took the timpani down again um, uh, from, from uh, a velocity level just to make sure that the other parts are heard again. And here we have another um, string part, which means um, that I wanted to make sure that the, I need to da -da -dum, go on modulation again. And where are we? Uh -huh. um, in order to make sure that kind of the string parts are being audible again, I once again put them up a tiny bit more here before um, then we go full blast um, when it comes to the um, to the actual production part. So um, here as well, we should have modulation. Um, oh, here's a bit, tiny bit less. I m might have even taken it a bit more doesn't hurt. Let's just increase the value here a bit. That's actually nice. <clears throat> Should have done that the first time, but you know, there is never perfection in whatever you do. Um, there is a point where you always have to stop because otherwise you drive yourself crazy. Now I increased it about, um, what is it, 10 um, uh, CC values and whatever. Sounds better. I'm happy with it. That's okay. Um, what I did here then, um, in this area, kind of before this uh, production part uh, is starting, so I was fiddling a bit around with regards to tempo values. And um, let's say it was a bit tricky. Um, I might have not had the best strategy to do that, um, but as I said, that was a year ago. So I went down with the tempo drastically and I kind of was drawing in this beautiful, nice curve to make sure that um, whatever I do next is... Um, in the value that I wanted. And uh, this area is kind of the last crescendo, the last push before um, that uh, shot when um, the producer is hitting the key on the keyboard. For me, that was one of the key shots. So I wanted to have everything full on, fortissimo, really, really loud, nasty, whatever is possible, throwing in that one shot that when you hit the key, you get the whole charade. Not ping, because 
I don't know. It didn't give me that vibe. So if we just kind of quickly play this um, section. Louder. And there you have it. A nice, um, how is it called now, nowadays? Brahms. That's what people love to call it. So basically it's just everything low at the same time, max volume. So one more time. Um, you can see here the tempo going from, sorry, uh, what do we have here? Sorry, yeah, Jesus. From 50 up to 92. So this is kind of um, the tempo uh, increase we're talking about here is obviously not natural. And if I would have had any, let's say, percussion, serious percussion, kind of a rhythm or something going on, it would, it would just sound completely weird and completely off. But since I don't, this is um, a very good way of kind of increasing your tempo without anybody knows it, noticing it properly. Yes. So um, just to recap, um, when it comes to your shots and uh, what you actually want to compose for, make sure that whatever you do is matching what you see. Um, except you want to do a completely, let's say, artsy project where I think, you know what, nothing has to match, but then you will have to live with the consequences of people telling you, ah, it doesn't really fit, I don't know. So um, the mixer kind of with the volume getting low, the uh, instrument sections with the instruments emphasizing what is actually happening. And um, last but not least, um, the, yeah. Um, kind of the, the, the keyboard part where the note is hit and um, full on we have the loudest we can get. Well, then in the end, um, basically what I uh, did, I kept kind of a bit of melody, even though there was nothing going on or not that much. And I just made sure that um, whatever um, I play here suits the words on screen. Um, I think I uh, managed to do that properly. Um, we still play normal melodies in here, so not really a lot of effects. Let me just play that back to you. So um, the last thing um, I think which uh, kind of was important is um, the, let's say, last chord, which I wanted to be, I wouldn't say disharmonic that much. I'm, I'm not even sure what chord I used here. I, and I don't feel like reproducing it because my, let's say, music theory knowledge um, is basic. To put it in a nutshell, so I never kind of studied music or anything. Um, so when it comes to these chords, I'm pretty sure people can hear what notes I played. I can't, and you know what? I don't have to. Um, so, but I, uh, what I wanted in the uh, at the end um, is basically giving a nice chord um, for the Spitfire audio coming up. And I know that they like kind of uh, things a bit not always as pretty sounding. So I uh, threw in kind of everything I could with regards to um, orchestration. And I threw in a nicely distorted uh, patch at the end um, to uh, get the synthesizer um, a bit more emphasis. So let me just play that again. Okay, it sounded differently because there were um, uh, effects happening, um, which, as I said before, if you if you have them uh, as a MIDI point and not as an audio point, um, when you hit the play button, it will always start wherever the pl play button is. It doesn't because it can't calculate how the MIDI note would have sounded if you would have started it five seconds before. Um, so that that's why uh, uh, kind of you could hear a bit of chaos here. So let me just play it from here and I think then we should be fine. And in 
into darkness. So, um, yes, uh, I don't think um, currently there is much more to, to say about this, um, to be honest with you. What I might do eventually, um, but I have to put my mind around it if I really want to go that far, because this is going to be a life which is not, I don't know, I have no idea how many minutes we have already, um, but this is going to be a life which will take much, much longer, um, where uh, I might score something to a bit of a picture. Maybe we find a short film somewhere online where we could just write some music on it. Um, and then we see how this will work out and we can actually do it live together. Um, until then, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. If you uh, like what I did, um, just give me a like, give me a heart, give me whatever you want to uh, give me. I highly appreciate it. Please uh, join my group if you haven't done so yet. Um, if you want to like my page, I would highly appreciate that. Um, after this live, this is going to go up on YouTube as well. And for the people who are watching it on YouTube, please uh, give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Um, I will see you guys next week. Um, I think we keep the 6.30 um, uh, timing because for me that works pretty well. Um, and yeah, nothing else to say. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good evening. Have a good week and bye bye.